Hello world, oh, this is Wolfstar Games, and welcome back to more AI the Somnium Files. Last time, it was all about uh, Ota and Mayumi. It, you know, we got through Ota's Somnium, and you know, I got to thinking about uh, who the polar bear could possibly be. And you know, seeing that this route is kind of family oriented uh, with the Matsushitas, I started having this crazy thought of the person in the polar bear suit being Ota's dad. I mean, I, I, I know he's supposed to be dead, but... I was thinking, like, who could be tall enough to fit in that suit? Because the suit is kind of tall. And the first person who I thought of was Ota's dad. So it's like, maybe, like, it's like a whole family thing? I don't know. It's like, it, this is where my mind went. It's like, I, I seem to do this a lot. Suspect that someone is still alive when they're supposed to be dead. I did the same thing in Robotics Notes Elite, so I, I don't know. It's just the way my mind works when it comes to uh, stories that has uh, characters who are introduced who are already dead. It's like I doubt that they're actually dead for for whatever reason. So that's where my mind has gone. I can't help it, so <laughs> I, it's the say la vie, right? I don't know, it's like I just make these crazy theories and I just feel it's all part and partial of uh, playing through a video game that has a strong mystery aspect to it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm really enjoying this game is the mystery aspect. It's like, who is the killer? Who who was the original Cyclops killer? And who is the new one? So it's like, I'm just trying to figure it out. And then with the polar bear, it's, who was in the suit? It's like, was it the new Cyclops killer or was it someone completely different? Uh, eventually, I'll find out. I guess. <laughs> Alrighty. So, we got a couple of big kind of revelations. Last time, so it, it, it's... Cuter, we're going to sync with Mayumi Matsushita. Prepare the machine. It's going to be a very... Interesting with uh, everything that we've already learned with this route, I feel. And last we actually left off, we were just about ready to go into Mayumi's Somnium. So th this should be rather interesting, I especially since she has dementia. It's like, what is her Somnium going to be like, I wonder, with, uh, with that fact? Um, well... Uh, What's wrong, Pewter? What happened? The sink machine isn't operating to capacity. What? I, how's that possible? Yesterday's sink... Well, suffice to say, uh, Ota and Date were not too compatible. What does that mean? Compatible? Other I'll than the obvious. I'll give you the big picture. But please do, Pewter. To get the synchronization working properly, I had to push the machine pretty hard. Alright. And now, it's not responding. Hmm, I wonder why. How long will it take to fix? 16 hours, at least. 
Okay, so I guess Mayumi Somnium is going to be delayed for a while. You've got eight. She, okay. She just cut that time and a half. But that's impossible. It's like, can you do it, Pewter? So we can't sink yet, huh? But we need to, or this investigation is going nowhere. No, I know that, boss. But at the same time, we can't rush things. Date, I suggest we go to Matsushita Diner. Alright, what for exactly? We may be able to find some clues. Maybe. It's like, I don't know what we could possibly find there. But uh, I guess we'll find out. Good idea. I'll let Boss and Pewter know. Pewter, we're counting on you for those repairs. I'll be back in six hours. But you said eight. It's like she did. Why is she going to come back in six hours, though? Please, you have to give me at least eight. He's getting all nervous. That pewter, always so humble. He'll have it done in six. <laughs> I, I'm sure Date is very well equipped to fix it, but even quick work has limits. Yeah, pewter is just that kind of guy, you know? Hey! This is a hostile work environment! <laughs> it's... Oh, I feel kind of bad for Pewter. I hope he can get it fixed in time. Why would Mayumi lie? Good question. She is probably protecting someone. More than likely Ota. I mean, th that seems to be the uh, Matsushita thing to do. Lying for each other. Protecting each other. But who? Surely you know by now. Yeah, it's like, come on, Date. There is only one person Mayumi would want to protect that badly. Really? Who is Mayumi co covering for? I mean, obviously it's Ota. Well, it, I guess talk to Aiba. Uh, Ota, Mizuki, Iris, Sosajima. I mean, it's obviously Ota. It's Ota. It has to be. Does Mayumi think Ota is the killer? I don't think she does. I mean, especially given my crazy theory. Last night, Ota left Matsushita Diner with Iris. Mayumi saw the whole thing. But Ota was stabbed in the stomach by the culprit. Does Mayumi not remember that? I mean, that could be part of her dementia. No, that isn't quite it. What is it then? It is possible that she thinks Ota is responsible for everything. Everything. Down to the smallest detail? She thinks Ota stabbed himself? I mean, given what we saw in the hospital, you know, with him having that knife in his hospital room, what was he exactly going to do with that knife? Was he going to stab himself? It's like, that that's the question, isn't it? Hmm. Yes. Why would he do that? Yeah. Why would you do that? Before I explain, 
I would like to hear your thoughts. All right. What do you think about the possibility that Ota is the new Cyclops killer? I feel like that doesn't quite add up, though. I mean... It, it doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. Ota being the new Cyclops killer. It... Impossible. Why? Why can't Ota be the culprit? In yesterday's Somnium, Ota and the Polar Bear. Iris had her eye taken out. The van stole it at Femisto. Why can't Ota be the culprit? I mean... The... Polar bear. It. I mean, I guess he. I guess he could have. Uh, hopped into the polar bear out outfit and then hopped back out of it. You know, with the live stream. Because we only saw it from that one angle. So we don't really know for sure if there were a two people there. You know, I'm not kinding Iris, obviously, but you know, there, there might not have been two people and there might have, and you don't exactly know. And I, I feel like Ota can't be the culprit because Iris had her eye taken out. He wouldn't do that to Iris. It's like he idolizes her too much to do that. To taint her like that? I feel like it's that. Iris had her left eye pulled out. Ota would never do that. Yeah. Have you considered that she pulled it out herself? Why would she do that to herself? That makes no sense either. What? Or even asked Ota to do it. I mean, he, he would reject that so hard, I feel, though, if Iris asked him to do that. Perhaps she ordered him to. Okay, not that. Hmm. I mean, could the polar bear be one and the same person? Could it be Ota? And I'm unsure about the van. I mean, the... F I mean, he, s he said that the van was stolen with Iris still in it, and he had to steal someone else's car, and that, that adds up to the station wagon and the van being at the warehouse, so... I do I don't think it's- I don't think it's that. The van. The Somnium? In yesterday's Somnium, Ota and the Polar Bear. That was just a dream. Well, yeah, but even dreams can re reveal- have some truth to them. It doesn't necessarily reflect what happened in reality. It's really the van? The van was stolen while Iris was in the passenger seat. We know that whoever did it is the culprit we're looking for. There is a chance that Iris was not in the passenger seat. Where would she have been then? She could have been driving. 
her fingerprints would have been found on the steering wheel along with Ota's if that was the case. But we only got Ota's fingerprints. How so? Iris could have taken the wheel herself and driven to the warehouse. But forensics only found Ota's fingerprints on the wheel. Exactly. That can be explained. How? It is possible that Iris covered her fingertips with her sleeves. I, I guess. I don't understand. I'm so confused. <laughs> In short, Ota and Iris are accomplices. This was all a performance. A performance? Iris drove the Matsushita's van. Ota drove the station wagon. They went to the warehouse separately. Then, they prepared the live stream. Iris anesthetized her left eye and removed it. How do you anesthet anesthetize? That's a hard word to say. Your eye. How huh. Either that, or she asked Ota to extract it. After that, Iris took her position on the table, and Ota donned the polar bear costume and started the saw. Consider this. In the stream, Ota and the polar bear were never on screen at the same time. Which is what I thought initially when I first saw this. True. That means Ota went off camera, took off the costume, and then... Stay away from Tessa! Perhaps Mayumi witnessed the entire event. It is also possible that Mayumi knew what the two were up to. So she lied to protect Ota. Yes, but this is only a theory. And much like my theories. <laughs> Why would they do that? Consider the possibility that Iris killed Shoko and Renju. I find that hard to believe too. It's like, why would Iris kill her, uh, one of her best friend's parents? Then, this whole thing was to get her off the suspects list. That's why she pulled out her eye and had Ota stab himself. It makes it look like there's another criminal involved. I will repeat myself in saying that this is only a theory. It is one of many possibilities. It's possible, but I don't think it's very likely. I mean, some of it seems likely, some of it doesn't, I feel. It's like, this is a very complex a set of events, and, and it's very, it can be very confusing to keep everything, you know, all lined up and together and try and make a cohesive enough sense of it. It's like, man, th this case is really making my uh, brain work. <laughs> they wouldn't go that far just to avoid suspicion. Or maybe they would. Date. You must consider the mental state of the serial killer. Shoko and Renju were both exposed and displayed. And they both had their left eye removed while they were still alive. Whoever our killer is, it is clear that they are sociopathic or even psychotic. We can't rule anything out.
I mean, they definitely can't rule anything out. Gotta lay the cards all on the table and figure out where all the cards lay, so so to speak. Ota, why are you? Why did you arrest Mom? You said you were gonna clear her! Why? Like, sorry, Ota. You need to consider every possibility. He is not happy. Picture frame. There's a photo in front of Ota. The family picture. Ota, let's talk, buddy. Let's see. You do it? Yeah, you doing okay? Okay? How could I be okay? I gotta ask. I'm sorry, Ota. I got to ask. I got stabbed by a serial killer! Easy, kid. You're gonna open up your stitches. <laughs> Let's see, uh... Why are you here? When I was in the hospital, the police came to me. They told me that my mom confessed. I couldn't believe it, so I went to the police station. But because she was under investigation, they wouldn't let me see her. After that, I didn't feel like going back to the hospital. That's why I'm here. It's not like Mayumi is under arrest. I didn't even get a chance to look, go with the other options. Dang it. You asked me why your mom was arrested earlier, but she isn't under arrest. More like she's under suspicion. What? I spoke with her as part of my investigation, yes. But as a source of valuable information, not as a suspect. Mayumi confessed, but it's highly likely that she's lying. Protecting you, Ota. And he was doing that right back after he, after we got out of his somnium. It, it's like he was lying to protect his mom as well. So it's like, why are they lying for each other? Protect, why are they lying to protect each other? It's like, come on. So we haven't issued a warrant for her arrest. That's what I've been saying. Mom didn't do it. She's innocent. Is Iris the criminal? Word is going around. Maybe Iris was the one who killed Shoko and Renju. And you and her planned this warehouse incident to get her off our suspects list. I feel like that's a very hard pill to swallow. Iris killing someone and killing not just one person, but two people, let alone the fact that it's Mizuki's parents. It's like. <laughs> no way! Tessa! Had her eye. She could have pulled it out herself. I feel like that would be very hard to do on yourself. I feel like you would have to have help with that. Or asked you to do it. 
You're kidding me, right? Do you really think I would do that? I don't know. I was fighting for my life against the criminal. That wasn't caught on camera, though. Neither was the part where you got stabbed. That is true. You're saying that I stabbed myself? I mean, what were you gonna do with that knife in the hospital, huh? Were you gonna stab yourself th then as well? And have Date and Boss witness you doing that? Or, well, maybe not have someone witness him stabbing himself, but I, maybe he was just trying to hide it while he was talking to them. If that's the case, he, he hit it very poorly. Just under the blanket? If you're gonna hide something like that, you, you would want to hide it like either under the pillow or under the mattress. It wouldn't be the first time you fake something, would it, Ota? Mm. He has a point there. You. Yeah. Did you stage the warehouse incident? I'm telling you, I didn't! Then why is Mayumi protecting you? Mom is protecting me? Yes, she is. And you're protecting her. Like I can see right through you, Ota. Your mother is stubborn. She's lying to us because she's protecting someone. The only person I can think of would be you. Yeah. Why? Apparently, she thinks that you're the criminal. Why would she think that? Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, really. <laughs> Got any ideas? Maybe because of her condition. Her dementia. Mom has... dementia. Maybe her memory is just mixed up. I mean, that could be the case. About Mayumi's dementia. Everything is my fault. It's because of me that Mom is... I know how it looks now, but back in the day, the diner was doing pretty good. Back when uh, the... Bloom Park was... Uh, was still in, you know... Full swing and... People were going there all the time <laughs> and just going right across the street to the diner to have like a spot of lunch. You know, Bloom Park is close by here, right? Yes. People who visited the park would stop here a lot. But ever since the explosion eight years ago. The chemical plant accident? Yeah. We're just barely outside of the restricted area, but because Bloom Park closed, the number of customers dropped by a lot. The diner didn't last much longer. That's really unfortunate. When this place closed, Dad started working at a Chinese restaurant chain during the day. Hmm. And he was a security guard and traffic cop at night. Security guard and traffic cop, okay. So he's multi-talented. Mom worked as a janitor. They were both working hard and barely got any sleep. And you? I was just a high school student at the time. I was... such a dumbass. I mean, even though you're a high school student... You know... You, you had to have known what was going on at the time. It's like this all can't just be in hindsight. I thought it was totally normal to have both parents working, so I didn't even get a part-time job. And they bought me a PC and idle concert tickets. Hmm. 
And that's how he discovered Iris? I had it good. But we were drowning in debt. Debt, huh? Is this where the Kumakuras would come in here? There's a loan on the house and the diner. Mom and Dad didn't let this place go. Not surprisingly. There are too many memories here to give it up. So they slave day and night to keep it open. But still, no customers. They worked and worked and worked. I, I actually remember way back when, um, you know, when I was really young, my mom wanted to be a housewife and, you know, my dad would just work. But really to make ends meet, my mom had to get a job. So eventually her, with her having to get a job, her... She wound up getting a career in massage therapy. So, they, my parents have both worked and worked and worked, much like, you know, Mayumi and, you know, Ota's dad. I can't remember his name. Uh, so, they worked hard to keep a roof over my mine and my sister's head. And keep us fed. So I can I, I can relate in that respect. It's like just your parents working so much, especially my dad. I mean he he's worked all his life. I mean he grew he grew up on a produce farm. Thanks to them, I was even able to go to a good university, but. Well, that's good. It's like, so it's like you got more education outside of just high school. Right after I started, Dad. Got sick. Passed away. Or, well, got sick, then passed away. Yeah. He had a heart attack from overwork from overworking, huh? Wait, uh, wait a minute. L what did his profile say again? L let me look real quick. Uh, what was... What was his name? That was it. Takedo. Let's see. He... Let's see. Ja, da, 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 da. It doesn't say, actually. I'm trying to remember what condition he had before he passed away. He had some kind of condition. I can't remember what it was. But his condition, whatever he had, was due from overworking and that caused a heart attack. Oh. It's like, I'm sorry, Ota, buddy. But even then, I didn't get it, you know? I didn't appreciate how hard they worked for me. Even when I wasn't taking college seriously and getting bad grades, my mom didn't say a thing. She just smiled and told me that it was okay. Even when I told her I was going to drop out, he was going to drop out? Mom, I'm thinking of dropping out of college. Why, uh, why did he want to drop out of college? What? Why do you want to do that, Ota? I decided that I'm going to become a writer. Wow, a writer. Oh, that's a good goal to have. I, I, I feel a certain uh, kind of kinship here with Ota. 
I mean, I, I didn't per se drop out of college. I just never went back. But you really should finish college. You work so hard to get in. <sighs> you don't understand, Mom. A writer has to put all of their time into their creativity. I mean, he's not wrong. I won't have time to go to classes. I mean... One of the, one of the things I remember reading from uh, Stephen King's book, nonfiction book, on writing is that if you have time to read, you have time to write. So, if you have time to do that, you also have time for other things as well. You know, like an education. Granted, with me, I... I just felt like I was unsuited for college, and that's why I never went back. Plus, I'm friends with the editor of a publishing company. Friends with a... editor? I'm definitely going to have my first book published. Is that right? Well, Ota, if you say so, I won't stop you. Do what makes you happy. You'll turn out just fine. I know you can do it. It's like, uh, uh, she was very optimistic. Always supportive of her son. <laughs> like, uh, boy, th this route feels very uh, relatable for me. And no matter what happens, Mom will always be on your side, okay? Yeah, in, in this respect, the whole family dynamic. Forever and ever, I'll always support you, Ota. So much that she'll even lie for him. <sighs> you lied about the editor thing, right? Yeah, I don't remember him saying that he was friends with an editor or anything like that before, so... Yeah. Yeah, how do you guess? It was really just a few texts back and forth. But I was thrilled. Okay, so kind of more of an acquaintance, I guess. I thought I could make it as a writer because of that. I mean, becoming a writer is a long and tedious road. I mean, f for myself, I've wanted to be a writer since I was, like, eight years old. And... As I've grown up, you know, I, I did a couple of things. I, I took... For one, I took part in, like, a writing contest. I, I didn't get first place, but... I took, I took part in one, and... I'm, I'm glad I... I'm glad I did take part in it, even though I didn't get first place. Got third with a bunch of other people, but, you know, it's just the experience of doing that, I feel, kind of got me a little more into uh, my writing. Then again... I am also a big procrastinator, <laughs> so a, a lot of times I just had no drive to write, but 
you know, now that um, I mean, I'm almost 40 now, and you know, I am still working on my dream of being a writer. I mean, I'm not published, but that's not exactly the route I want to take with my writing. I mean, I'm more so want to be a screenwriter. So, so of course, being a screenwriter, it takes a, a lot more time and effort. Especially since you're dealing with the entertainment industry. It's like, the entertainment industry, of course, is extremely hard to get into. Whether you're behind the camera or in front of the camera. So... Even though I have this dream, I'm. I've been slowly working at it. I mean, I've been working on a couple of screenplays, and you know, when I do get finished with them, you know, I'll go through them again. You know, make sure they're com absolutely completely polished to the to my liking and you know there's contests that I could submit it to or or I could try and you know find an agent you know there's multiple things that I can do to try and get my w screenplays out there and get and try and get them green lit anyway <laughs> back to the game but it's impossible. I know there's no way I can be a writer. Don't, don't think like that, Ota. It's like, don't give up on your dream. It's like a lot of times for people who have dreams, that's the thing that drives them to you know, get up every day and try and do what they love. In amongst the things that they have to do. I've never even finished writing a novel. Not even once. I mean, that's not so bad. I mean, even if you just w work on it a little at a time. I mean, that's that's what I've been doing with my screenwriting. I mean, I've been, like, w working on one of my screenplays during my lunches at work. I mean, I sure I could also write at home, but you know, I've <laughs> at home I've I find myself wanting to play video games, <laughs> so <laughs> it's try, trying to find a balance is also difficult. I always give up after the first five thousand words. That's not that many words to even apply for the amateurs contest you have to submit 10 times that but mom she still she kept supporting me when did Mayumi's illness start not long after I quit college mom was always smiling at me but I think she was starting to slip mentally one day. Oh, what's wrong, Ota? Do you have the day off from school? She forgot that he quit college. Are you being sarcastic? Oh, right. You don't attend anymore. Oopsie, I totally forgot. How can you forget your own son's career choice? Sorry, sorry. Anyway, are you hungry? You haven't eaten anything since this morning, have you? Are you kidding? What? I ate breakfast and lunch already. Oh, did you? Uh, by the way, Ota, what's living at the dorms like? Uh, 
it, just it, experiencing this in a video game, the whole the whole dementia thing. Uh, this gets me. This really does get me. Why are you making fun of me? She's not though. I'm not teasing you, honey. Don't fuck with me. Oh. Ota, calm down. I mean, I know this is a flashback, but calm down. Calm... Calm down? Calm down. <laughs> Aww. Such a sad face there. Listen to the rest of the story. Mom got sick because I'm such a piece of shit. That's not why she got sick. It's like, don't beat yourself up over this, Ota. It's not your fault. I was only thinking about myself. I didn't take care of her. I was so stupid, I didn't realize she was sick. I thought she was messing with me. I was so cruel to her for no reason. <laughs> And she got worse and worse. Um. What's that picture? Ota turned the photo frame to me so I could see. Looking at this photo reminds me. Same picture as before. One time, when I was a kid, I said something really bad to Mom and Dad, and they scolded me for it. And it's not like it was an apology or anything, but Dad and I gave her a Mother's Day gift. The, the flower knife? My mom was so happy that she cried. Or was it the apron? That's what this photo is from. Why did it turn out like this? I'm such a bad son. No, you're not. It's like, seriously, stop beating yourself up. Hey, Iba. What is it? I don't like Ota one bit. I mean... It's like... Date may not like him, but Ota is hurting. And I guess Date is now like sympathizing with him. But I can't imagine that this guy's the criminal. Yeah. That too. It's like not someone who has a loving family atmosphere around him. And someone who is actually a really good guy. Why is that? Hearing his story made me think that he's not such a bad guy. Yeah. It's like he's a good son. He's a he, he's a good friend to to Mizuki. Right? I mean, we we haven't really seen them interact too much. It's like only towards, really only towards the beginning of the game, but he he really isn't such a bad guy. I mean, sure he's kind of headstrong and doesn't really think things through before he does things. <laughs> I mean, like like hitting Date over the head with a walk and tasing him. It's like, it's like, that is, that doesn't put him in a very good light, but he's just acting on instinct. He, and he, he's easy, he's someone who's easy 
to be panicked. But deep down in his heart of hearts, he's a decent guy. Your presumption is illogical. You only say that because you're a computer. An AI. Human beings are logical. Yeah. It's like, you can't predict a, what a human being will do. We're not like you, AI. We can't be logical all the time. Exactly. But we make up for it in one very important way. Our humanity. What is that? Intuition. Intuition as well, yes. Do you find that useful? At times. Hmm. Iba, let's go back to the cold storage warehouse. So we're gonna go back there? Why are we going back there exactly? We might be missing something. What could we be missing? <sighs> Understood. I mean, you have no choice, Abba. You're in my eye socket. <laughs> you gonna be okay, Ota? Ota is sitting with a depressed look on his face. <sighs> well, before before we actually head to the cold, the the warehouse. Let's go through these case notes real quick. I, I didn't want to interrupt the flow of the mood and the atmosphere. So let's look at these real quick. My album updated. Oh, okay, of Ota. What the heck? <laughs> Uh, that's that's Iva, isn't it? With a drum over her? That is hilarious. <laughs> Are you trying to be Bruno, Iva? Uh, okay, concept drawings of Ota. He has an interesting little, like, belt. I mean, it kind of looks like it has like like fans right on the front of it so, so it's like so if he were to like turn that around turn the fans on he could propel himself forward <laughs> oh huh so this must have been the initial uh concept art for for Ota honest honestly his his final uh concept art looks way better okay uh, and then the appendix how many do I have here uh Second. Okay, just just one to look at. Conspiracy to commit murder. An agreement between two or more people to commit murder. In this penal system, those who conspire to commit murder will receive the same punishment as the actual murderer, if convicted. There's still seven characters unaccounted for. I'm guessing those seven characters will be in the other route that leads to the uh well it, if i bring up the flow chart that lead to the uh right here after uh after mizuki's somnium that's what I'm guessing, anyway. Alright. Well, Ota, 
I'll see you later, okay? You take care of yourself. Stop beating yourself up. Date, weren't you going to check the warehouse? I mean, we will, but I guess we're going to look outside first? I was, but a thought occurred to me. Thought, huh? What about the uh, vehicles? Iba, who drove the van here? There are two possibilities. Either Iris or the criminal who kidnapped Iris. And Mayumi? Considering the time that she purchased the chocolate, that would be almost impossible. Right. The van was hijacked from the Famisto parking lot at 10.32 p.m. At that time, Mayumi was in the 812 convenience store more than 100 yards away. So almost certainly not her. Okay. Help on the station wagon. Iba, are you sure that Ota took this car? What what is Date thinking here? That someone else drove the station wagon and not Ota? As I've already explained. I mean, they they brought up the possibility of Iris driving the van, but with her sleeves covering her hands, so... So what? Could she have driven the station wagon? Doing that same, doing that same exact thing? But, but then how does that explain Ota's fingerprints on the steering wheel? If that was the case. Hmm. The security cameras at the Famisto parking lot saw the entire incident clearly. So it was definitely Ota who drove it here. Why are you stating the obvious? <gasps> we found the chocolate Mayumi bought on the floor of the cold storage warehouse. But that doesn't prove she was actually at the scene. If she was, how did she get here? Yeah, that that's the one thing that's been bothering me. If if the culprit took the van while she was in the store and Ota took the station wagon here, how did Mayumi get here? Was the quote-unquote culprit Mayumi who drove the van and not actually Iris? I mean, she would have had to cover up her hands as well if she did. Or, or just use something else to, uh, you know, or, or use something to cover the steering wheel. She wasn't in the van or the station wagon. Or was she? Of course. A different car. But where's that car? Right? I mean, if... If the culprit got away in the polar bear suit and drove off, there would have been a third car. I will search for all vehicles that were in this area from Sunday night to Monday morning. Iva connected to the end system server and began her research. She got a result in no time. Found one hit. A taxi. A taxi? A taxi of all cars. Huh. 
Where is that taxi now? It is parked in Lemniscate's parking lot. At Lemniscate? What's it doing there? Just parked there with no one in it? At Lemniscate? Why? Unknown. But we should speak with the driver immediately. Okay, well, I guess we're not going in the warehouse. Do the, do the policemen have anything to say before I leave? He says he doesn't have any new information. Okay. How about you? Nope. Okay. Hmm. Very cute. Curious what's going on here now. Telemnus Gate! Oh. Hey, got a minute? Well, I... I... I guess we are going to get another character in the in this branching half of the flow chart. Hmm. Are you talking to moi? You have an interesting looking face. And yes, I am talking to moi. Moi? <laughs> I mean, he's not French, right? Date, now is not the time to be distracted by this old man's diction. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ira, but I am distracted by his addiction. Mind if I ask you what you're doing here? That face. Moi? I am but a humble taxi cab driver. Oh, whose voice is that? There we go. I'm with the police. I have some questions for you. Okay, taxi driver. What's your name? Let's see. Uh, what are you doing here? I have just finished conveying my client from Tameke Sano's studio. I was informed that the visit here would be brief. And thus, I have decided to wait in this lobby. He has some real chompers there. <laughs> uh, where are you from? I was born in Kawago, Saitama. Okay. And why do you talk like that? <laughs> Saying moi and all? <laughs> Like, definitely not French. And he doesn't even have a French accent, so why is he saying moi? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Oh, come on. Yes, you do. I've spoken this way all my life. My parents speak with the same vernacular. All right. <laughs> About Mayumi. Before I arrived at Lemniscate, I got a picture of Mayumi from Abyss. I showed it to the driver. Did you drive this passenger on Sunday night? Ooh, I did indeed. I remember her well. The old hag. Excuse you? She's a nice old lady. Do not call her a hag. Old hag? I took her on a tour of the streets of Tokyo. A tour? What? Our ultimate destination was the warehouse district in Ariake. Why didn't you report this to the police? That is questionable, isn't it? Report it? You don't know about the incident at the cold storage warehouse? It's like, how could he not know about it? It was all over the news. 
No, I'm afraid not. Do you not watch the news? Newspapers and television news programs have never been much of an interest to moi. Okay. What happened with Mayumi? Moi. That's what I'm gonna call him until I find out his name. Hmm. I recall it was around 10 in the evening. Well, that definitely lines up. Near the Kabasaki district, an unassuming restaurant named Matsushita Diner. That's where I picked up the old hag. Stop calling her that. And as soon as she stepped foot in my conveyance, she was already barking orders at me. Follow that van, hurry! I must admit, I found it rather exciting, just like an old chase film. I, of course, insisted that I be paid up front. His, his face is kind of getting to me. It's like just... The... High cheekbones, the the very toothy smile, very narrow eyes. It just... It kind of looks like he's wearing a mask, honestly. <laughs> we pursued the van for roughly half an hour. Suddenly, the van came to a halt at a convenience store. The Famisto along Koshu, right? Precisely right. I am surprised you know that. In any case, I knew that the jig would be up if we were seen following the van. So I decided to drive past it. I parked at the 8 store, but 100 yards from there, while waiting for the object of our pursuit to make its next move. The old hag suddenly spoke up. Stop calling her that. I have to buy something, she declared, then made her way into the eight. I mean, it's a little odd to just be like, oh, uh, stop here. I have to buy something while you're chasing after your son and the girl that she declares to be a witch. It's like her dementia. It's her dementia, obviously, but still, it's like it's a little odd. At the, any, all the same. So ugh. this must be when Mayumi bought the Odoroki Man chocolate. A few minutes later, the old hag finished making her purchases and walked out. Actually, now that I look at his face more, it almost looks like his face is, like, caved in. And then, at that very moment, I witnessed the van jet off at great speed down Koshu. I hurried the old hag inside my vehicle, then resumed the chase. I don't like that he keeps calling her that. We followed them for roughly half an hour more. I see. If the driver's story is correct, Mayumi did not know that Oto was left behind at the Famisto. Right. Because he uh, he had to uh, steal that station wagon. Mayumi thought Oto was in the van the whole time. Hmm... Listen to the rest of the story. We then arrived at a splendid manor. Manor? Manor. What? Was it Sosajima's place? The van entered the premises through the front gate and disappeared from view. Whoa. I mean, it certainly sounds like it's Sosajima's place. I remember Date saying to So that he had to j jump over the gate. 
We, of course, could not follow, so we waited outside. I estimate another ten minutes passed. The front gate opened once again, and the van drove out, and we pursued. Get... Uh, did they get help from Sosajima? Hmm... But 30 minutes later, our pursuit was foiled again. What happened? The van drove into the restricted Kabasaki district. Really? Practically right back home. The old hag, of course, demanded that I follow. This was a rather long chase. But I was not about to risk my license and livelihood. Instead, I parked on the road and waited for the van to drive back the way it came. Ah, but of course, we knew it might not take the same road back. Right. In fact, we were not even sure the van would be coming back at all. But the old hag was not keen on giving up, so we began our stakeout. About 45 minutes later, the date had changed at this point. It was 12.25 a.m. on Monday. How do you remember the time so well? Well, you see, I always keep my radio dial on the same station. I remember precisely which programs were playing during this endeavor. He has an, an incredible memory. Thus, I can approximate the time. I see. Please continue. At 12.25 a.m., the old hag's tenacious gamble paid dividends. The van returned down the same street. And thus, we again made pursuit. I kept considerable distance. We had come so far, I did not want to get caught now. I'm surprised he went along with this. All right, so all of a sudden, to have a passenger who wants you to chase after an unknown car. An unknown car to him, anyway. It's like, you think that he would question his passenger. It's like, why do you want to chase after this car? But yet it doesn't seem that he did. But my caution backfired. I lost sight of the van in the RARK warehouses. Without so much as a thank you, the old hag popped open the door and took off toward the warehouses. She was in a hurry. Clearly. I waited for some time, but the old hag did not return. The goose was cooked at this point, so I made the decision to return home. Okay. So the, those were the only two vehicles in front of the warehouse, the van and the station wagon, when he drove up, right? There, there wasn't a third car, like, for the, for, for the culprit to get into and leave? I mean, if... If those were the only two cars, that does make it a little more suspicious, doesn't it? I am glad I had the foresight to ask for payment in advance. How much did she pay him? They went uh, around to a lot of places. I have one more question. I follow your story. I have one more question. Where is this manor the van stopped at? I'd say it's pretty obvious. Oh, every taxi driver in the city knows that residence. Oh, do they now? It is the personal home of Congressman So Sejima. I was right. What? Why? Why would they go? To so Sejima. Sejima? 
Why did the van go to So's house? All right, brother. We need to speak with him immediately. Yeah. But he can shed some very important light into this case. Agreed. Let's move. Oh, man. So, uh, my, my mind is going a hundred miles per minute. Why so Sejima? Why go there? Why go to him? I have no idea. I think I'm actually going to stop it here for now. So we'll we'll get to so Sejima's house next time. This is getting really, really interesting. And a lot more complex. It's like seriously, th this this case has so many moving parts to it that it's kind of crazy. I mean, it now Sosajima is involved in this. I mean, my God, what more could be thrown at me with this case? This is kind of a doozy. Anyway, I'll finally stop it here, so I hope you all enjoyed watching, and thank you all for watching as well. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, like and claw that subscribe button to become part of the pack. And as always, everyone, I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, wherever you may be.